Now we come to Johnson's party piece. Virgil wrote, Fert orida usurper oras, sends through the air this dread command. Now, Johnson, in a perhaps natural desire to desert the classroom for the playing field, translates this as, uh, carries horrid orders in his ears. Now, I don't want to emphasize your individual mistakes, but I would like you to realize that although this poetry was written 2,000 years ago, the people it was written for had feelings and emotions just as modern as yours, in many ways far more sophisticated. Now, just to end the lesson, I'm going to read you a translation of one of these poems by a modern poet who understood this. And I want you to try and appreciate its timeless beauty. You shun me, Chloe, like a fawn that on the wild untrodden screes seeks her shy mother, startled if a breeze rustles among the trees. For if the first faint shivering dawn of earliest spring sets the young leaves a-whispering, or the green lizards shake a bramble in the break. She stands with knocking heart and trembling knees. you might be walking back this way. I have some shopping to do in town and I must change a library book. Come with me. Maybe I'm not so fond of walking after all. Rude watching us, darling. As though I were going to eat you. I wonder if they realize how lucky they are to see more of you than I do. They'd probably settle for seeing a good deal less. Latin isn't their favorite subject. What are you looking for? A new one called Sudden Madness or Sudden Something or Other. I can't remember. Oh, they'll know at the desk. Oh, I don't want to ask. They're always so superior. I've got an idea Americans are practically illiterate. Oh, darling, you've got to remember that this is the equivalent of your small towns where they think that all Englishmen are stuffy. No town could be as stuffy as this one. Oh, yes, it could. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with either you or me. Ours are friendlier. Well, you would have plenty of friends if any you could be bothered. Oh, darling, I have been bothered. Maybe it's old-fashioned of me, but I'm no good without you. I seem to live in a vacuum. With you, I could even enjoy tea parties with vivid chats about mumps and measles. Mm. Besides, even if it's only part-time, I've got a friend. And what are you grumbling at? I don't know, really. But sometimes I wish you were a writer or something. Then we could live where we liked. And you wouldn't have to teach school and leave me alone all day. But I like school teaching. Besides, what would I do in this utopia of yours? Go crazy, I guess. Because you couldn't do without your work. You're one of the dedicated people. Shh, someone might hear you. You are, too. One of these days you'll find a new pupil in your Latin class. And it'll be me just sitting there looking at you. Mm -hmm. Come on, Mrs. Barter. Let's go and find that book you wanted. Oh, Mrs. 
Mrs. Barlow, what luck catching you. We wondered whether you'd come over and watch television this evening. Well, I oh, it's a good play. I forget who it's by or who's in it, but I do know it's good. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Welsh, but I've got a pupil coming in tonight for extra coaching. Oh, oh. Uh, well, uh, another time, perhaps? Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks for getting us out of that. That's true. I have got a pupil coming. Oh, Stephen, why? Because it's only a week to the exams, darling. Oh, there you are, Mrs. Barlow. Now, is there anything else I can do before I go? Not a thing, Mrs. Usher. Well, good day, ma'am. Hello, Mrs. Usher. Good day. Is he coming for dinner? It's a girl. Oh? One of your many fans, darling? Naturally. She's a nice girl. Intelligent, too. But her Latin's terrible. What's her name? Barbara Vining. Baba, come and get your food before you ruin your appetite chewing that pencil. Now, will Henry be home for lunch? I've taken a great deal of trouble with this stew. The brewers take a great deal of trouble with his beer, too. Ring him up, Evelyn. Try the paper. Charlie, I assure you, the whole climate of that thought. You know, this stuff tastes much better in a pub. Yes. For you. Who is it? Evelyn. Hello, Evelyn. Dear Evelyn, she devotes her morning to experiments in the kitchen. They have to be treated with great respect. Well, come home and eat it while it's hot. All right. Ten minutes. And it'll be the longest ten minutes we've ever known. We'd better carry on. Come on, Barbara. Leave your old books for a bit. And your old Latin. All the Latin I ever knew was fee fi fo fum fee fi fo fum isn't Latin. Oh, well, it's as near as makes no odds. You need taking out of yourself. Come to the pictures with Aunt Evelyn and me tonight. Do you good. I've got to go to Mr. Barlow's. He's coaching me in Latin. Oh, isn't that kind? What a nice man. I don't see that one evening's coaching can make all that difference. Can it? And all next week. Well, Mr. Barlow's wife, Bibber. Well, for heaven's sake, the things that go on in your head. Do you think a man like Mr. Barlow would ask a girl to the house of his wife weren't there? You see sex in everything, Evelyn. Sex is everything. Well, you can have it. Anyway, what a way to talk in front of a girl. Don't pick at your food like that, love, as if Evelyn had put arsenic in it. Now I'll have to go and tell her I didn't mean what I said about the arsenic. I seem to spend my life apologizing to Evelyn. thought of you and I forget to do the little ordinary things that everyone ought to do hmm. I think you've had enough for this evening I'm afraid it's hopeless I'm so sorry not hopeless exactly just difficult you may get through with luck. You're very kind to take so much trouble with me. Nonsense. You work hard, you deserve to pass. Anyway, you can have another go in the autumn. I'm getting so old. You'll probably find several other old ladies of 17 in the same predicament. You'll never know how slow the moments go. Till I'm near to you, I see your face. I don't believe you even know the grammar problem. No, I don't think I do. Well, it's a serious reflection on this fine new school of art. It isn't the school, it was my father. He didn't bother much about grammar. He used to teach me by crossword puzzles. What, Latin crossword puzzles? Yes, he made them up himself. What does he do, your father? He's a reporter. Right here in Rudford? Yes, he's on the Rudford News. He writes political columns, too, on the Kettering Star, the Leicester Gazette, and the Buckingham Journal. Busy hmm. man. Are you happy at home? Oh, yes. Good. I sometimes wonder about my pupils. They come into the classroom for an hour and submit to having their minds improved in a state of armed neutrality. I don't think we're really ourselves during school hours. No, I don't think you are. When does your not go out into the great big world? Six weeks, is it? Five. 
Counting the days. Marking them off the calendar. Yes, but not because I want to leave school. I thought the end of school was the great emancipation. I hate the thought of leaving. That's very unusual, surely. I don't know what I shall do. Your career, you mean? No, that's not what I meant. What do your parents want you to do? They want me to train as a secretary or something. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think that was your destiny. I don't know about destiny. It's a word my aunt uses a lot. In what way? Romantically? Yes. Don't let your aunt regard you, Barbara. Your character is your destiny. I don't know my character. To me, it's a model. Hello, darling. Lesson over. Half past nine already. I must go home. Oh, don't go, just as I come in. I have so few opportunities of talking to my husband's pupils. Let's have some coffee. I make it myself. I'm the only one in this house who makes good coffee. All I ask is lots of praise. What a good idea. And you? You'll have some coffee, won't you? Uh... Barbara. Barbara? Yes. Yes, thank you. Sit down. Relax. You live in Redford? All my life. I was born here. How terrible for you. Tell me, whose idea was it that you should have extra coaching in Latin? Mr. Barlow's. Well, what do the other pupils say? Doesn't his individual attention suggest favoritism of some kind? Oh, no. He would do the same for anyone. You know, there's a tenseness about this conversation that isn't really necessary. You think you're in love with my husband, don't you? No, no. Don't say anything. But have you ever thought of how embarrassing it might be for him? I would never embarrass him. Are you in love with him? I didn't say I was. Now, don't be upset. I'm not accusing you of anything. Let's talk about this car. I can't talk about it calmly. Please let me go home. Well, I seem to have stirred something up. I'm so sorry. I didn't I'm mean... I'm going home. Please forgive me. Something the matter. Stephen, why did you bring her here? You know perfectly well why I brought her here. She's madly in love with you. Okay, darling, be your age. What's got into you? Don't pretend you don't know. You suppose I spend the day puzzling out whether or not one of my pupils is in love with me? I'll go get the coffee. Stephen, there's been something about you lately. You sit behind a book, but you're not reading it. You sit in a chair and go off into a trance. Are you going back on some nostalgic journey to your own youth? It's you who should remember to be your age. What did you say to her? I told her I knew she was in love with you, that's all. You... All I did was warn her, darling. Okay. Have you forgotten how serious one is at that age? How vulnerable? If she has a crush on me, believe me, I didn't realize it. They fall in love. From the age of 13, they fall in love. Well, not with me in particular. I thought you'd treat the whole thing intelligently. If you'd told me, asked me, I... I might have. But you saw it. Through my own eyes, not through yours, until now. When the mischief is done. Stephen? Stephen, where are you going? You're going after that girl, aren't you?
come now. A sandwich. A sandwich, is that all? <laughs> Barbara can't be home yet. Her coat isn't here. But she must be, it's so late. I'll go and look in her room. Barbara. Is she in? No. Nope. At least we know where she is. Though it's a long time for a lesson to go on. Too long. Too long for what? For a lesson to go on. Barbara went to the Barlow's for some coaching in Latin. Isn't she back yet? No. She ought to be in bed, silly girl. Don't you think you'd better go and fetch her? I don't like her being out alone at this time of night. All right, my dear. And don't you get talking, Henry, and keeping people out of their beds half the night, even if they offer you a drink. Don't you worry. Mrs. Barlow? Yes? Good evening. I'm Henry Vining. Oh, come in, Mr. Vining. Thank you. I thought I'd better collect that daughter of mine. It's getting rather late. Oh, well, I'm afraid she's not here, Mr. Vining. She left about half past nine. Where else can she be? She must have called into one of her friends. Thoughtless creatures, children. Streets are empty. Most people seem to be in bed. In this town, they draw a very definite line between night and day. Come on in and have a drink, won't you? That's a charming idea. What will you have? Scotch and soda? Thanks. I promised my wife faithfully I wouldn't, but still. Where can that girl be? Is it usual for her to be out at this hour? No, but the unusual happens. The personality at that age seems held together so very precariously. Especially hers. Why especially hers? Tell me about her. What can I tell you? I'm a careless parent. I bob like a cork on the currents and undercurrents of my household. I only know her at second hand, really, through my wife, who throws me scraps of domestic drama from time to time. She tells me Barbara has something on her mind. But then my dear wife thinks that human happiness depends on everyone's mind being an amiable blank. Do you mind if I ring up my home? Do, please. Thank you. What could she have on her mind at her age? Some aspect of sex, I should guess. You know those first impacts. They can be very disturbing. I suppose. I've forgotten. Hello, Vi. Hello, Henry. Darling, I'm speaking from the Barlow's. Is she back yet? No. What? No, Henry, she's not. Oh, she's probably called Chuck. No, I don't think she could be with any of her friends at this hour. Oh, my dear, where is she? I just don't know. Hurry home. Evelyn, where can she be? She left there at half past nine. Strange, isn't it? Difficult, too. One doesn't know where to begin to look for her. Could I have a word with your husband? Well, he's not here, Mr. Barney. He went for a short walk. When she left, did she seem depressed in any way about her chances in this examination? Well, I, I don't know her well enough to say. They worry about such things. Get them out of all proportion. Stephen. Hello, Kat. This is Mr. Vining, Barbara's father. How do you do? I came to fetch my daughter. Well, isn't she home? No. She must be. I assure you. Did you see her when you were out? No. Is she so elusive? Okay, please. 
Is there something you know that I don't? I'm afraid she's in love with my husband. You can't be taking this seriously. She's a child. I'm suddenly very anxious about her. When you were out just now, Mr. Barlow, were you with my daughter? Yes, I was. This is very disturbing. But at least there's no mystery now as to her whereabouts. You've, you've just taken her home, have you? No, I left her about an hour ago. I put her on a bus at the bridge. At least I stood on the path and watched the bus stop and start off again. You didn't actually put her on the bus? Well, no. It seemed unwise for both of us to be seen together at that time of night. That was an hour ago? Yes, roughly. If she'd been on that bus, she'd have been home in ten minutes. Less. Uh, yes, she would. Then where is she, man? I don't know. Sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Wilde. Have you seen Barbara this evening? No, we haven't seen her. Sorry if I woke you up. Since it is the last week before the examinations, I propose to recapitulate on the terms wet. Who covered Peter up? I did. He was singing. Where's Henry gone? And he went back to the police station. One of the search parties has just come in. He must be worn out. He had about an hour's sleep in the chair. Fie, dear, for the last two days you've done nothing but wander about in that old dressing gown. What else can I do? Well, you could get dressed or you could go back to bed. What do you think you've been having all these sleeping pills for? I don't do anything except slow everything up. I can't think properly. I feel as weak as a cat. Why, they've found something. What? Her belly. 
Where did they find it? Below the bridge somewhere. Oh. I was remembering things about her. Do you remember when she used to think that the equator was an imaginary line around the Earth? So it is. No. Lion. L-I-O-N. She thought it just kept running and running round the earth. That's just plain silly. It isn't silly. She was only six. Trouble about trying to talk to you is you've no sense of humor. I don't see how anyone can have a sense of humor at a time like this. I'm her mother and I give my life's blood for her. Why doesn't Henry come back? Those drugs are making you childish. Better get a grip on yourself. What are you doing with Barbara's things? Henry asked me to go through them. I'm never one to pry, as you know. He wanted to spare you having to do it. What are you looking for? Anything that would give them a clue as to what might have been going on in her life. I knew everything that was going on in her life. Nobody knows everything about another person's life. She had no secrets from me. Everyone has secrets. You think everybody's the same as yourself. You'd better get to bed, Vi, dear. You're not fit to be up. I've been thinking that maybe it was not the right atmosphere for a young girl to be brought up in. You and your strangeness. Strangeness? That man you were in love with. The one we never talk about. For 20 years, you've acted as if every time the door opened, he would come in. He does? You're nuts, Evelyn. Somebody should have told you years ago. You fell in love once, and you've never let go of it. And look what your life's been. No need to pity me, Vi. My life is complete, far more than you would ever understand. I still know love, my own mind, my own way. Well, whatever it is, it addles your brains and everybody else's. I'm sick of it. Maybe Barbara was sick of it, too. And that's why she's run away. Is that what you're thinking? It could never be me she ran away from. Or her father. These drugs are getting you all mixed up. You never talk to me like this in the ordinary way. We've always been good friends, haven't we, my dear? No. Better get to bed. this. It's a calendar belonging to Barbara. You see those marks, how some of the days have got circles around them, others underlined. She seems to have been terribly concerned with the days and the passing of time. Why? What does it tell us? Obviously it had a meaning for her. But not for us. What are they saying in the town? <laughs> this town until we know the truth. Well, you shouldn't answer the phone. I have to. Might be the news we're waiting for. Did you hear anything when you were out shopping? Oh, gossip, that's all, madam. What do they think it is? Suicide? Maybe. Maybe done in. You mean they think she met some kind of maniac? 
Evelyn, did Barbara ever talk to you about Barlow? No, but I knew about him. It appears that he was her great love. Yes. Strange, isn't it? Very strange, Henry. You realize it's my story repeating itself. He was the first and he was unobtainable. Don't just talk nonsense. My story isn't interesting anymore, but don't forget it was the same as Barbara's. Rubbish! Henry, when she comes back, you must leave her to me. I'm the only one that can understand her. I can help her. Why did she go? Why? Why? I can't think anymore. My mind is full of horrors. Whichever way it turns, it runs into horror. <laughs> You're quite sure this meeting with the girl was accidental, Mr. Barlow? No, Inspector, that was a lie. I'm sorry, but I couldn't foresee that this would happen. I told you it was accidental because I didn't want to hurt my wife. You arranged to meet her? I telephoned her. There'd been some small incident during the evening between my wife and her. She was rather upset when she left the house. I had the idea it was something that ought to be put right. So you rang her up and asked her to meet you? Yes. I see. Now that seems to put rather a different light on things, doesn't it? She's still only a missing girl, Inspector. Yes, sir. One of hundreds. Every day, dozens of them are reported missing in the metropolitan area alone. Even so. Is there anything else you want to ask me, Inspector? No, not at the moment, Mr. Barlow. There are bound to be further inquiries, of course, but we'll try not to embarrass you unnecessarily. Thank you, Inspector. To make an assignation with a girl pupil, that was an incredibly foolish thing to do. I realize that. Make no mistake, I shall tell the headmaster exactly what I think. He was out with her that night, and it wasn't the first time, not by a long way. I'm not going to have my girl come into this school, so long as that Barlow goes on teaching here. What guarantee have we got that he won't go and do another of them in? But we don't know that he's done anyone in, do we? Well, I've very good reason to suppose we have, and I'm certainly not going to let it rest there. Ladies. Mr. Varney. It's this way. 
Thank you. Henry, here's Mr. Barlow. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Viney. I hardly expect a welcome, but I would be grateful if I could have a word with you. Well, come in. Evelyn, go and see if Vi's all right. Keep her in her room. Mr. Vining, I'd like to talk to you about Barbara. You know, I suppose, that the whole town has its finger pointed at you. I could hardly fail to. There's been some wild talk. Wild exaggeration. Who is to say? Police have started building a picture of her life. I don't recognize it. A lonely girl given to days of silence, long walks alone by the riverside. Headmaster's been examining her work. Essays, comments, opinions. They're subtle and mature. To me, she was a child. She wasn't a child. They've started dragging the river. Yes, I know that. What do I do with my wife if they find her there? What do we become? Old, sad people staring into the fire, wondering where we failed. Do you think they'll find her there? I know no more of that than you. But I did want you to know that I never harmed her. That's what I came to tell you. Then where is she, man? Is she dead or alive? I can't answer that any better than you can. Mr. Barlow, I am now facing two possibilities about my daughter, suicide or some crime against her. I realize that. That's why I came. To assure you that I'm a perfectly normal person, and as far as I know, incapable of physical violence in any form. They all talk like that. When the passion of a thing is over, they're clear and lucid, more normal than the normal. And they're polite and restrained, too. Like you. There's nothing more to be said, then, is there? I want to believe you, Barlow. You have all the outward signs of a civilized mind. I've been a newspaper man too long to be beguiled by that. We often meet them, doctors, scoutmasters, ministers of religion, suddenly find a frightening spotlight on themselves. But you, what sort of man are you? You have a beautiful wife, a good position at the school. Couldn't you have seen if you were the normal person you say you are that any relationship between a master and his pupil had the very texture of catastrophe in it? There was no relationship. Situation then. Not until that night. The more I talk to you, the more ominous the thing becomes. Mr. Vining, please believe me. I am not a seducer. Then why telephone a girl of 17 to meet you late at night in an isolated spot? But it had to be an isolated spot. You know this town. I daren't be seen with her or she with me, and I had to talk to her. At least I thought I had. To make love to her? No, Vining. Now let's have the truth! Will you listen, if I try to explain with absolute honesty the situation between your daughter and myself? That you loved her as a father or as a brother. Vining, please listen to me. I'll try and find the truth. If I loved her, it was from a distance, from, from a long way off, as the dead might love the living. I'd been aware of her for some time. There was a new excitement in my daily life. Sometimes, as she sat there in the class, it was as though I'd gone back to the age of my own innocence, having forgotten everything that I'd learned in between. There existed in the air between us, how shall I put it, a state of love. That's how it was. What you say has the ring of truth. Where is she now? Where did she go? The river? I can't believe that. I won't. Oh, we shall soon know. Have a drink. No, thanks. I must go home. Barlow. I've said some harsh things. I feel easier in my mind for having talked to you. So do I. Don't worry. I'll see myself out. Right. Good night, buddy. Good night. Oh, darling. Oh, hello, dear. Where have you been? I've been so worried about you. 
I was on the verge of calling the police. Gosh, I'm tired. You should have gone to bed, Kay. You look worn out. I need a drink. Do you have to go to that school tomorrow? No, I don't have to go to that school tomorrow. I've been asked to resign. But why? They can't dismiss you on rumors. Well, the headmaster was very reasonable and just. I saw his point of view. Stephen, have you any idea of what a thing like this will do to your career? My career is of no great importance to me just at the moment. Your only concern is for that girl. I've just come from seeing her father. I think at least I was able to convince him that I did her no physical harm. Did he imagine you had? It's been nearly three days, Kay. Three long days and nights. Oh, if I could just for one moment penetrate this darkness. This darkness of not knowing. Not knowing whether she's alive or dead. Not knowing your part in it. I told you, dear. All you told me was an innocent story that puts the affair in the class of... of an indiscretion. That kind of indiscretion gets you sacked from that kind of a school. Stephen, I don't want to keep on at you because I love you. But you've never told me the whole truth about that girl, now have you? I can't talk about it to you. Why not me? I'm in this with you. I'm sorry, but I don't want you to be. Stephen, darling. We're stuck in this apartment with police activities and rumors and scandals going on outside. We've no choice. We had no choice, Mr. Vining. We all feel terrible about it, all the girls. Nobody at school can think of anything else. But you see, we know... Well, Phoebe had better tell you. Well, it was because... Oh, you'll be very angry and we're not saying anything against Ma. I was her best friend. I... I mean, I am. The class thought that I should be spokeswoman. All we want to see is that the person responsible gets his desserts. Responsible for what? For whatever happened to her. We don't like telling you, but we had a meeting and we thought it was our duty. It's about Mr. Barlow. Yes? Mr. Vining, in the last few months, Barbie became quite different from what she used to be. In what way? Well, she wasn't one of us anymore, just different. Wasn't she, Phoebe? It was Mr. Barlow. She had a terrible crush on him and he used to lead her on. In class, he never took his eyes off her. You're sure you're not exaggerating? Henry, let them say what they have to say. We wouldn't exaggerate, Mr. Vining, because we don't want to add to your troubles. But it's dreadfully serious. Tell him, Phoebe, begin at the beginning. Well, she used to go for walks alone, along by the river. And so did Mr. Barlow. It's been going on for months. He would go along by the river, alone. And then shortly afterwards, Bar would follow. Doris Morgan's mother seen them often. Has she seen them together? No, that's the point. They wouldn't want to be seen together. At least he wouldn't. He's got a wife and, and they say she watches him like a cat. A chance meeting with a girl on a road at night doesn't warrant your being asked to resign. But you say it was reasonable and just. It was late at night and the road was lonely. The headmaster asked why I didn't see the girl safely home, if my conscience was clear. What did you say? I said my conscience wasn't clear. What does that mean? It means that I felt sufficiently guilty not to want to be seen alone with a girl at that hour and in that place. We're not condemning her, Mr. Vining. Oh, he's angry with us, but we've known ever since she disappeared and we couldn't keep it back any longer. He's not angry. You see, only three things could have happened to her. She's run away to hide, or she's thrown herself into the river, or it's him. He committed a crime that night to cover everything up. You'd better get along home. Mr. Vining has a great deal to think we about. We all knew something would happen if we came in the spirit of malicious gossip. No, no, we don't think that. There he was, carrying on with his class as if nothing had happened. Well, say goodnight to Mr. Vining. Oh, yes, good night, Mr. Vining. Henry, say good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Vining. Kay, darling, let's talk the language of facts. It was you who first mentioned the word love to the girl. You accused her of being in love with me. I don't believe she had the slightest idea. That's childish. Well, anyway, she didn't recognize it as love. I asked her. Then you both lied to each other like mad, dating your awareness of it from the moment I mentioned it, as if I handed it to you on a plate, with my blessing, no doubt. It wasn't like that at all. How was it then? Okay. Don't you turn against me. 
I couldn't turn against you any more than I can live without you. Oh, Stephen, what's happening to us? Sometimes I find myself hoping that it's true, that she really is out of our lives forever. You know I could almost hope she were dead. Don't say that! You must love her very much. I love her at the moment in the way that one must love a child that is lost. Don't you see, Kay? If she's dead, she'll never be out of our lives. You can't think or speak of anything else, can you? Naturally, I can't. She's crossed my path with a vengeance. She's made me take stock of myself, of, of my relation with you, of the whole routine of our lives together. Of course I must think of her. You love her. All I'm concerned with is that she should be found alive. Do you mean that? Of course I mean it. And if she isn't, what then? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, Stephen, I had a warning of this. I've been uneasy for weeks and I didn't know why. Until she stepped into the house that night. Then I knew. That's why when I joined you both, I behaved so abominably. But I wasn't jealous of her, Stephen. I was frightened for you. Henry, they could have been wrong, those girls. He came here like some smooth counsel for his own defense. Talked me out of my doubts, my own instincts, and I believed him. He took me in as he took her in. Henry, where are you going? Henry! Make no mistake, if you don't do something about this, I'll print the whole story and accuse the police of ineptitude and incompetence. Now, look here. I tell you, those girls knew what they were saying. Suddenly, I could see it all. He's a good talker, a good manner. But you take a look at him. Behind that smooth delivery, there's a world of subtlety. If you don't do something about this, I'll make such a splash across oh, the newspaper. Henry, Henry, I know how you feel, but it's no good going off the handle like this. This isn't your job, this is ours. I promise you that we'll deal with it as faithfully and speedily as we can. Now, good night, Henry. I'll call you in the morning. Why is it so many old boots lie at the bottom of a river? Who puts them there? Not me. Not me either. Henry, I thought of looking in to see your wife this afternoon, but then I changed my mind. Why? Because you can be more help to her than I. Go home, Henry. You can't do any good here. Spoke. It was a man. He keeps ringing up, saying horrible things. What sort of things? Oh, filthy things about you and the girl. He rang several times already today. Why didn't you tell me? He sounds like some kind of lunatic. I suppose it couldn't be that Barbara was waylaid by someone that night afterwards. Someone like that, you mean? Yes. Why should he ring up here? 
Anonymously? From a call box? Gloating over details? Anyway, I better let the police know at once. Oh, darling, don't. They might think... What could they think? That I was looking for a scapegoat? Okay, okay, darling. Good evening, sir. Barlow, I'm very worried. Even though it's so late, I thought it better to come and see you rather than to try and talk to you on the telephone. Oh, will you sit down? We were just going to have some coffee, weren't you? No. I don't think your husband realizes the seriousness of his position, Mrs. Barlow. We both do. Obviously, it's very serious for my husband to be dismissed from the school. That was necessary. Nobody regrets it more than I do, but in a mixed school, in an experimental school of this nature, even a slight indiscretion is a serious matter. This was rather more than that. Do you agree? Yes. I'm not given to dramatizing things, but if you knew how the school and the town were seething with rumor, one has to call it rumor because one isn't yet in possession of all the facts. If you knew the shape this story was taking, our immediate worry wouldn't be your resignation. My immediate worry is the girl. She will be found if she's alive. Opinion, I'm afraid, inclines more and more to the view that she isn't. Public opinion. Police opinion, too. I hate to say it. That's why I couldn't rest for thinking of you and your position. When we talked yesterday, I realized that you had no idea of its seriousness. Barlow, have you seen a lawyer yet? No. I think you should at once. Explain the situation and ask his advice. I think it's most urgent. Mr. Griffiths, you dismissed my husband on the one fact you know, that he had met this girl alone at night. The meeting was an accident. If you were wise, you'd tell your wife the full implications of this case. I've tried to. It's difficult. I didn't want to involve Kay or hurt her. To me, it seems so terrible that Stephen should be victimized merely because he's become the focus point of an adolescent infatuation. I'm afraid, Mrs. Barlow, you don't know the full facts. I'm sorry if I'd realized that. I wouldn't have begun this conversation. Darling... I didn't tell you this before because I'd hoped it would never be necessary for you to know. My meeting with Barbara that night wasn't accidental. I telephoned her after I left the house. I asked her to meet me. My dear Mrs. Barlow, try to keep an open mind. You need one another's help at this moment more than anything else. I don't know if you know, but the police have started dragging operations below the bridge. If she's found there, your position will be pretty grim. Eating, Brown. Evening, sir. Mr. Barlow still in? All I can see is our whole life together collapsing around us. That's not true, Kay. Everything's just as it always was. Then you can have no idea what it meant to me. Look, darling, everything I've said or not said has at least been in the spirit of the truth. Truth? Suddenly we've been brought face to face with the extent of the pretense in our lives. There's been very little pretense in our lives. And you're creeping out at night to keep an appointment with one of your pupils. That was the beginning. Where do we go from there? But all I wanted to do was to talk to her, to put things right. No, I can't convince you, can I? And you got the advantage just because you caught me out in a lie. Can't you see I'm terrified because of what I don't know? One lie, one inaccuracy. But how many more, Stephen? What kind of a mess are you in? It's the police, sir. Good evening, officer. Good evening, Mr. Barlow. I'm sorry to bother you at this time of night, but it's about the suit you were wearing the night Miss Vining disappeared. Yes. It was a grey tweed, I understand, sir. Yes, it was. Is it here? Of course. If you don't mind, the inspector would be interested to see it. Certainly. Mrs. Usher, would you mind getting my grey tweed suit and putting it in a suitcase? Perhaps he'd also like to see the raincoat. If you please. And the shoes. And the dark brown shoes, Mrs. Usher, the old ones. Anyone? 
The inspector would also like you to accompany me to the station, if you don't mind. He's making out his report. Very well. Thank you. Shall we go, sir? Look after him, Mrs. Usher. All right. Mr. Barlow. Yes? What's that for? We haven't got a picture of you in the files, Mr. Barlow. And why should you want one now? We heard that you'd resigned. I work for the Rudford Gazette. We are always very interested in any changes that might take place at the school. And why a picture with a police station in the background? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Might be anywhere. May I advise you to watch your step as to how you use it? Certainly, we have to. It doesn't mean that it's an arrest, Mum. At least it didn't look like that to me. That policeman spoke very civil to him. Now, don't you go upsetting yourself, Mum. Mr. Barlow wouldn't like that. Oh, would you like me to freshen this coffee up a bit? Oh, no, thanks, Mrs. Usher. You should have gone home long ago. No, I'm staying with you. It doesn't do to sit brooding alone at a time like this. It doesn't do any good at all. Oh, there you are, Henry. I just made some tea. Still fresh, in the kitchen. Where are you going? Out. Miss Viney, you've chosen a bad moment to come here. It's far too late, and I don't want to see anyone. I didn't choose the moment. The moment arrived. Well, I'm very worried and tired. Too tired to talk now. You think I've been talking nonsense, don't you? Like my brother and his wife. I don't know whether you have or not, and I don't care. All my thoughts are with my husband. Why? His have not been with you. What do you mean? My niece was the great love of his life. It's ended in tragedy because you were too small to see it. They've been lovers for months. Finally, it reached the stage when her life has had to be sacrificed. Whether by her own hands or his, we don't know yet. You see, I'm the only one who really knew Barbara, really understood her. I live in the same house with my brother and his wife. I knew what was going on. Mrs. Usher! Mrs. Usher! Is it true what she says about that girl? What that man said on the telephone? What did you want to come here for? She'd have learned in God's good time from people who knew how to break it to her. I knew I should never have let you in. Go on, get out. You've done enough damage for one night. And whatever's happened to that girl, it's no more than she deserves. And good riddance to her. girl must have led him on them. It was you he really loved. There was never a shadow of doubt about that and swear it before the whole world. Is it possible? Is it really possible? That's all I know, Inspector. But this is the third day, Mr. Barlow, and there's been neither sight nor sound of her from the moment you say she left you. You must see that our investigations will have to take a more personal turn. Towards me. Well, who else at the moment? You were the last to see her. But I've told you, that's all I know. You have told us practically nothing, Mr. Barlow. These were the clothes you wore that night? Yes, they were. Well, I'm glad to see you didn't send them to the cleaners or anything like that. Why should I? Well, clothes do go to the cleaners occasionally, don't they? I believe in him, but... Am I so in love that I can't see properly? If only I could think clearly. Even for a moment. Is there any news? Nothing new, my darling. No. Come and sit by me. It 
may be we shall only have each other. But of that we shan't be utterly lost. Will you be going out again? Not if you want me to stay in. Don't go out, Henry. Anything to eat? No, not a thing. She must, you must, my love. Go and get her something, Evelyn. Go and be a drudge, Evelyn. You who have no mind, no heart, no soul. What on earth is all that about? It means that I, who am supposed to know nothing of human love or passion, am good enough to do the household chores. She talks about nothing but love. Highfalutin talk that drives you silly. She went to see Mrs. Barlow. Tonight? What do you want about him there for? I don't know. What in heaven's name could she have had to say to her? She didn't tell me. I'd better go and talk to her. you again. Oh, darling, it's been so awful. We've been in such a state. <laughs> she even stopped talking, believe it or oh, not. Oh, they've been giving oh, me man. drugs to make me sleep. That's why I look so terrible, but I didn't care. Oh, baby, where have you been? No questions, Vi, no reproaches. Not now she's home. Oh, Daddy, I'm so sorry. You both look so worn out. How could I have done it to you? But don't worry about us. We're all right. God's good. And I've been saying such wicked things about him in my heart. I heard voices. I couldn't believe my ears. Look, Evelyn. She's back. It's my little girl, safe and sound. Why, what's the matter with you, Evelyn? You love her, too. Don't you care that she's back? Come and sit down and get warm. The police have been dragging the river for you. The police? They've been looking everywhere for you. Inspector Garland, please. Oh, baby, it's so wonderful to have you back. Hello, Fred. Well, Henry, nobody could be more glad than I am. No, don't worry about that. He's here with me. Hold on. She's back. She's all right. Thank God. Thank you for letting me know at once. And I'm very really happy for you. Goodbye. Inspector, would you have a call put through to my wife and tell her I'm on my way home? Yes, of course. Thank you. Get Mrs. Barlow on the phone. But I'd like to tell her the news myself. You must be starving. I'll get you something to eat. I'm all right, Henry. <laughs> I'm alive again. She hardly knows what she's doing. Daddy, she looks so ill. She'll be all right now you're home. I feel so ashamed. I don't know what to say to you. Here. Drink this up. It's neat. 
That'll make me sick. No, no, it'll do you good. Stop you shaking. Where have you been? I've been to London to stay with a girl. She used to be at school with me. I owe her two pounds. Oh. I was going to stay there until I'd worked things out in my mind. But then I thought that you and Mother might be getting anxious. We were a little. What did Mummy mean about the police? We had to report you missing. But I've only been away three days. Three days can be quite a long time. I didn't think. Life is very difficult, isn't it? Very. I was so desperately unhappy and muddled. One is at times. One goes into the wilderness. Yes. One tries to reach the last line of the sonnet. The truth, you mean? But when the truth is something you can't bring yourself to face? What does that mean? I love him. I shall always be in love with him. He loves his wife. I know. Baba. I don't quite know how to tackle this. From its very secretness and inwardness, love is not easy to talk about. But you're my child, and I hate to see this distress go on. I know I shall have to get over it. I will. And quickly, my darling. But how? What should I say to you? Perhaps I'm the wrong person to attempt it. My contribution to the high passions was a very small one. I fell in love with your mother, married her, lived happily ever after. That's all. But because I found love in my own back garden, it doesn't blind me to the fact of the jungle outside. I can't laugh at this turmoil of first love. Not after the anxiety of these last three days. Then how do we treat this episode? Let's face it as it is. Love misplaced. Love incomplete. Love to which you have no right whatsoever. Let's rely on your own dignity of mind to see you out of it. <laughs> Does all that seem just a torrent of words to you? No. There's something else I'd like to say to you. We have a living example in this house of the twists that extravagant, frustrated emotions can take. Aunt Evelyn? She had a love affair that went wrong. She wouldn't let go. She clung to it, stored it up. And you see me like Evelyn in 20 years' time? No, I can't see that. I've been thinking too much, worrying too much. Every bush has been a bear. Besides, it doesn't apply. Her affair came to a disastrous end. This hasn't. Thank heaven. It's just come to an end. Yes. Baba, what happened that night? Did he telephone you? Yes. To meet me. I met him and he talked to me. He tried to make me see. Then he sent you home on the bus? Yes. But I didn't go. I ran back to find him. But he'd gone. He often went for walks there. I used to follow him. Did he know that? No. Had you ever met him there before? No. Baba, 
Is that the absolute truth? Of course it is, Daddy. And there's never been any affair between you? No. How could you think that of a man like him? We're going right past the Vinings. I wonder if you'll mind if I dropped off for a moment. I would like to see her for myself. It's the least we can do. Thank you. He's been under suspicion from the police, persecuted by his pupils, slandered in the town. He's had to resign. Oh, Mr. Barlow, Hello, do come in. She's back home. Yes, I know, they told me. We're so excited, we hardly know what we're doing. She's in there. Here's Mr. Barlow. I'm in the middle of getting her something to eat. I won't be a moment. Hello, Bob. Are you all right? Yes, thank you. Late, late in the gloaming, Kilmany came home. I think she must have looked rather like you. She learned something in her wanderings, didn't she, Kilmany? Did she? I don't remember. She had any sense she did. Barbara has sense. I'm very sorry for all the trouble I have caused you. And your wife. You just walked away in the opposite direction. There's no need to apologize for that. Forgive me, Barlow, won't you? For all my doubts. You were entitled to them. I used to recognize truth when I saw it. Well, I must get back to my wife. She doesn't know the good news yet. Goodbye, Barbara. Goodbye. I'll see you out. <laughs> Kay? Kay? Okay. Oh, hello, Mrs. Usher. Where's Mrs. Barlow? Well, I don't know, sir. The telephone rang and she didn't answer it, so I came in from the kitchen and the front door was open and she'd gone. It was the police to say you were on your way home. Kay, she's back. She's all right. 